The new Nissan X-Trail is a huge step forward visually, but does it stack up on fundamentals against leading competitors like Mazda's CX-5? What about Subaru's Forester? Should you bother putting the new X-Trail on your SUV shortlist? Let's find out. Solid but uninspiring. That's been the Nissan X-Trail story so far. But this model certainly is an upgrade. In fact, SUVs have become the cornerstone of Nissan's vehicle portfolio. The company now has six different SUVs, the Duke, Qashqai, X-Trail, Murano, Pathfinder, and the I'm so big I've got my own gravitational field, Nissan Patrol. The X-Trail is the one designed to take the fight squarely to Mazda's CX-5 and Subaru's Forester. So it's up against some of the market's most solid competition. The overarching first impression with Nissan X-Trail is they got the fundamental engineering just right. This thing doesn't squeak, it doesn't groan, it doesn't creak, and it doesn't rattle. It doesn't do anything nasty dynamically either. Basically, you just get in it and tell it what to do, and it does that. That doesn't mean it's exciting or inspirational though. I guess if you want excitement or inspiration, you're gonna have to pay a fair bit more. The X-Trail offers quality family transportation, and the price is right. The range stretches from just over $31,000 to just over forty-eight, dollars based on estimated driveaway prices. They call it an SUV, but collectively the X-Trail and its competitors retain only vestigial off-road aspirations. Nissan even says the X-Trail is, quote, family proof. There are three specification levels, there's ST, STL and TI, and this is the mid-spec STL and basically it hits the sweet spot for the majority of family purchases in Australia. The ST is a little too stripped out, designed to appeal only to the kinds of accountants who buy vehicles on behalf of Avis rent a car or something. The STL has some cool features. It's got a 360 degree surround car camera system which will tell you if you've got anything to the side or behind or in front and it's a real plus in sardine tin garages and tight inner city car parks. On the STL, you also get privacy glass, a seven inch LCD monitor, sat nav, DAB radio, a splash of leather, electrically adjustable front seats, that's both front seats, and dual zone climate control air conditioning. Try getting all of that standard on a $40,000 Audi. Stepping up to the X-Trail TI adds about eight grand, which is rather a lot to pay for a compendium of partly cool kit that's kind of nice to have, but which you don't really need. If you're in the market for a Nissan X-Trail, you have to make some key decisions. Do you really want all-wheel drive? Because that's gonna cost you about three grand more. Do you want five seats or seven seats? It'd be nice to be able to cherry pick exactly the vehicle you want, but in reality, there are more limitations than that. The world's not perfect. If you want a five seat with all wheel drive, you can have that, but you can't have a seven seater with all wheel drive. You can have a two wheel drive, front wheel drive, with either five seats or seven seats. So I guess you have to weigh up pretty carefully whether you're actually gonna go for a drive down the beach ever, or whether you're just gonna go in the car park and walk across the sand. Off-road ability is almost irrelevant to most owners, but those all-wheel drive X-Trails will actually go a long way off-road. Nissan's all-mode all-wheel drive system incorporates a lockable centre differential, which maximises tractive effort when it's slippery. And they've improved the approach and departure angles with this new model. But the vehicle comes only with a space saver temporary spare tyre, which is hardly a good idea if you're looking down the barrel of 50 kilometres of rough gravel between your flat tyre and the nearest likely repair. Good luck getting there with that. Having seven seats is a real benefit compared with a vehicle like, say, a Hyundai iX35 or a Mazda CX-5. 
The X-Trail is the same size as both, but they're stuck in five-seater territory, whereas you can have seven seats for about a thousand bucks extra with the X-Trail. That's pretty good news if you've got kids and those kids have got friends and you want to be their chauffeur. The transmission's interesting, it's a CVT, continuously variable transmission. So it adapts in real time by selecting the right ratio based on the prevailing speed and load conditions that you're driving in. It's a little bit different than driving a conventional automatic though, which cycles between defined ratios. If you want to change gears manually, you can do that. You just nudge the lever across and you're in Tiptronic mode. And what that means is the transmission just emulates a manualized automatic with seven speeds. Basically, the CVT just adopts one of seven different presets and you can change it with the stick down here. It'd be nice, I guess, if there were some paddles behind the wheel that you could shift manually. But in reality, most X-Trail owners are just going to get in, start it up, select D for drive and get from A to B via D. I've driven the two-wheel drive STL for a week now and the two-wheel drive powertrain is absolutely fine for commuting and other daily driving. It's better than fine on bendy roads too, at least at the kinds of speeds you'd be driving if you didn't want to induce instant motion sickness in the Rugrats. The front wheel drive X-Trail in D is completely benign as a family wagon. You don't have to compensate for too many deficiencies. It simply does exactly what it's told. It might not appear to be this way, but this X-Trail is slightly bigger in all the key dimensions compared with its predecessor. It's certainly lost that boxy demeanour though, and ultimately I guess the converging roofline at the rear might be something of a compromise if you've got bulky items to store in the cargo bay, particularly if they're tall bulky items. But everything else about this just looks like a sleeker, more holistic design, and you don't have to worry about it being any smaller. The 2.5 litre petrol 4 is slightly better than adequate and the CVT does a really good job milking it for performance. But I wouldn't be feeding the two litre petrol engine in the base model. That would be like stepping back from business class to economy. But in a few months, there will be a third X-Trail engine option. A diesel engine is on the way and frankly, I can't wait for that. It should be an absolute cracker. After driving the front wheel drive STL for a week, I really admired just how solid it felt. And I loved how even the mid-spec X-Trail STL managed to feel premium. And despite being a two wheel drive, you had to push it insanely hard, way beyond family friendly, to overwhelm the front end. As a family car, the two-wheel drive X-Trail is completely benign dynamically, plus well-built and impressively equipped. But it's not perfect. I hate the X-Trail's parking brake. You know, foot-operated parking brakes are a crime against humanity. And it's got one of those. Some paddles behind the wheel would have been a plus, you know, to shift gears manually, even though statistically, as an owner, I probably would never use them. And on the commercial front, you know, Nissan will still try to sting you for 500 smackers for premium paint, even on the fully loaded TI model. Whereas Toyota and Mazda have seen the light and basically now they throw premium paint in for free. The X-Trail delivers slightly less engine performance than the Mazda CX-5, but in mitigation, it doesn't have the CX-5's insanely annoying automatic engine shutdown in traffic. Mazda calls that I stop. In time, you might call it I hate. If you've got a lot of driving on unsealed roads planned, I'd rate the Forester as being ahead by a length, partly because of Subaru's terribly successful symmetrical all-wheel drive system, and partly because the Forester at least manages to ride around town with a full-sized spare wheel and tyre. X-Trail's big advantage compared with Subaru Forester, Toyota RAV4, Mazda CX-5, Hyundai iX35 and Kia Sportage is the cost-effective availability of seven seats. And when you don't need them, seats six and seven fold down nice and flat, leaving a completely unencumbered, flat-floored cargo bay. The new Nissan X-Trail is sexed up and it definitely has the underlying substance to justify inclusion 
on your short list. If you want to save thousands on one, visit the website autoexpert.com.au. I'm John Cadogan. Thanks for watching.